Yo, what's up? Chris Hook Podcast here, episode number 79. Today, I'm going, I'm winging this thing. I'm going right off of the, uh, right off the old uh, dome piece here is what they used to call it back in my day. Um, and basically, what we're going to be talking about is on parenting, right? This is a topic that I think about often. I observe a lot, and I don't want to be judgmental towards anybody because some of the things I'm going to talk about today, I violate these rules. I just try hard not to do it often, right? I try hard to limit um, some of these negative things that I might be doing as a parent with my daughter. So, you know, this whole thing kind of came about, you know, I'm reading, uh, I'm reading Benjamin Franklin's uh, biography, right? And when you look at this thing here, when we talk about what, what it's like having a child in the late 1700s, early 1800s, until um, what it is today, it's pretty much night and day. Now we have all of this, uh, we have a lot of medical procedures in place, we have hospitals, we have sanitary conditions, safe conditions to have a child. You know, if there's an issue, hopefully that, uh, you know, your doctors catch it early, they take care of you, they could treat this, that, and the other thing. Back in those days, that wasn't the case. I mean, you're having a child. It was a very serious matter. And I think over the course of these past couple of centuries here, these past couple of decades, the seriousness of having a child started to dwindle. Um, and it just, you know, it's not literally life or death like it used to be. So, you know, in the 1800s, if you're going to have a child, 400, there were 462 deaths per 1,000. That's almost one in two children, right? That's a lot. Nowadays, that number is seven child deaths in a thousand. So you don't have that risk as much as you used to have it anymore. Um, you know, you're not going to know somebody. It's not going to be your mother it's that has a child that uh, doesn't make it, right? You're not going to witness this stuff. It's not going to be a part of everyday life like it used to be. And that could be a potential deterrent, right? And then in addition to that, during Franklin's time, you know, children that were, were born, one in four did to make it past their first year. So not only are you going to have a child, let's say you safely have a child, but then down the line here over the course of that first year, you might lose a child, right? That's really risky. And that's only one side of the, of the equation here. Now we're going to look at being a mother and having a child. And I think the number was like uh, 25 deaths in, in a thousand. I don't know. You know, so, you know, maybe two out of every 100, two or three pregnancies out of 100, the mother's not going to make it, right? That that number right now is, is not even anywhere in that same ballpark. It's totally diminished. So the risk for the mother is down, um, and the risk for the child is also down in terms of not making it, right? So that's one aspect that I often think about. It's like, you know what, if you're, you, nowadays it's like, uh, people are having children that aren't quite ready to have a child yet. And it's because of the lack of seriousness that they take when it comes to mating, okay? Um, I guess you have to know the ramifications every time you do something like that, right? Is that it could end in a pregnancy. And are you ready to have a child right now? I had a child at the age of 32. I think that's okay, right? But then on the flip side of that, when you start looking at fertility rates, you know, the country is, is not as fertile as it used to be in terms of reproductive stuff. And the older you get, the less fertile you are, right? So, you know, the ideal time is probably somewhere in your 20s, right? But then we're not even mature enough yet, man. It's like we're, we're not even grown yet to have a child, and yet we're going to have a child. Back in the day, I think my mom had two kids by the age of 21. That is nuts in my mind. To have two children at that young of age and to try to grow them, teach them in the best way that you can, is a lot to ask for. You're going to wait until your 30s, and then you're running the risk of, you know, your reproductive system not being as, as uh, fertile or as abundant or whatever the hell the word you want to use is, right? So if you want to have a child, you got to be mature, you got to be ready, because this is the biggest thing, this is the most serious thing that you'll ever do in your life. So... You know, we look at the uh, the lack of um, the lack of seriousness. I think when it comes with reproductive uh, mating, we'll call it. Um, you know, that 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 is thrown by the wayside now with you know people having a lot of different partners and you know somehow promiscuity is like a cool thing, especially with the dudes. And uh, it's not so cool with the female, but that's starting to shift too a little bit here. So we're having children out of um, out of relationships, right? There's, there's not two parents that are staying together. That, that, that number's higher than it's ever been. So with that, I think it's important that if you do, and then, you know, if your plan is to have a child, right, you should have it with somebody that you're 100% confident that things are going to work out with, right? Um, to have a child is serious. So if you have a child and you decide maybe me and my partner here, we're not meant to be, it's not going to work out. You just really ran the risk of seriously complicating that little one's life and causing potential harm. Now, there's a lot of kids that come from single homes or uh, split parent duties and stuff like that that end up being totally fine and okay. 
but it is a challenge. And it's like if our goal is to make this world a better place, we need to kind of start with our own home and in our own house and make sure not only that your life's in order, but that their, your relationship's in order as a, as a partner and also as a parent. So as we go on with this now, it's like, all right, so you decide to have a child, but you're not sure you got the right partner. You know, I talked to a psychologist over a year ago and they were like, you know, you know, you people could raise a kid in different homes and this and that. The more I think about it, the more I realize that that's a scary, that's a big risk that I don't think I want to take. Um, you have a child with somebody, you got to make sure that it's the right person, then you got to make sure that you're going to stay together with that person. I think you should do everything in your power to stay with them. And there might be some hiccups along the line, there might be some hiccups down the road, but just try to keep your child in mind and understand that our kid here is going to be better served if there's two parents together in a loving home, right? Not just two parents in a home that aren't present, two parents that are in a, in a healthy relationship and they show love to each other and they show love to the kid and all that good stuff, right? And we'll get on to that a little bit down the line. So take mating serious, right? Uh, be smart about what you're doing because there's serious, serious ramifications if you have a child and you're not ready for it or you're not with, you know, the partner that, uh, you know, you're not gonna be with your partner for long term, right? That's serious stuff. Um, be safe. Be careful. Now let's say you do have a child, right? Now we have to start thinking about, you have a child, you're gonna stay with that person, right? So now you got these different, uh, you know, over the past couple decades, things have changed now. You got two parents working. It's just kind of the nature of the beast now. Um, you need two incomes to run a household, or a woman decides, hey, I wanna be a mother, but I also wanna have a career. When we get to a situation like this, oftentimes somebody else ends up raising the child. And there was a great line in uh, the book, No Country for Old Men by Cormac McCarthy that's like, so if you have a generation of people that the, their, their, um, their parents raised their child, right? So the grandparents are raising the kids. What happens when those parents become grandparents and then they have to raise their, their grandchildren? They never raised a child before because the grandparents raised their kids. They have zero experience raising a child. And then over the course of these decades and, and, and you know, these generations of uh, spawning, I guess, for a lack of a better word, with each generation, you're going to have somebody that's less equipped to raise a child. And you get to this point here where uh, people are being raised in a house that is just not ideal. Um, as a parent, you know, you want to be present, not just physically present, but present in what, everything that you're doing. And you got to fight the urge to check your phone when your kids are telling you a story. You have to fight the urge to, you know, spend a Sunday watching football all day and actually spend some time with your kid. I mean, I'm freaking running around the house holding a horse. And I think back to what I was doing five or 10 years ago, and I was like, I never saw this thing coming, a fake horse. You know, uh, Emmy's running a pony around the living room, and I'm holding the back end of it so she doesn't drag it around by its head. It's a toy horse, OK? Um, Stuff like that, didn't see that one coming. Or, uh, you know, all the other stuff, doing partner yoga. Um, who knows, I mean, whatever little girls get into, it's kind of where I'm at right now with uh, how I'm spending my time on the weekends. I, I haven't even watched an NFL game, the season just kicked off, I'm like, I got no time for that. I can't rationalize spending hours a day sitting there um, watching a television screen when, it, when your child's there, I can't do it. So what are your alternatives, right? If that's something you want to do, then somebody else is going to have to spend time with your kids. Or if you want to work, if both parents want to work and have a career where they're working 40 plus hours a week, who's going to raise your kid? A grandparent, a nanny, uh, daycare, something like that. So, I mean, if you compare two kids and you, you look at a kid that both of his parents were pretty involved in their childhood compared to the kid that was raised by a nanny or a grandparent, I mean, which one do you think is going to have that better bet on... Um, having better like coping mechanisms and emotional um, responses to things and handling of situations better. I imagine it's gonna be the one that has a parent there and not that grandparent because um, they, they need to see, they need to know that their parents are there and that their parents care and that their parents aren't gonna put other things ahead of them, right? Um, old, uh, I forget the guy's name, something like A Bear. I don't even know what his last name was, right? Some sort of old English proverb that was, you know, one father's worth 100 schoolmasters. And I think that's 100% true. There's uh, never say never, all right? I'm gonna say never, I'm, I'm gonna leave this statement with a never say never, but you know, you can't have somebody else, if, if the father and somebody else does the same stuff with their child, I think the father, the lessons learned from the father or the mother is gonna have a greater effect on that child than if it was learned elsewhere, 
I just think it, it, it is that way. Now, there's going to be times where they go to school and they learn new things that the parents don't teach them. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that same lesson. You know, having the parent involved in that kid's life, and no matter what they do, is what's going to have the best effect for them. So to say I'm going to have a child, but I also want to work full time. So what are you going to do? You're going to send your kid to daycare. It's like, wait a second here. Let's think about these long-term ramifications of what you're doing with your kid now. You're going to have somebody else raise them. You're going to get upset with them when they're doing things that you don't want them to do. And why are they doing things that you don't want them to do? Because they're not there actively teaching them what is right and what is wrong. What they're doing is what's acceptable in whatever environment they're in. And it might not be your environment. So you got to remember that. You can't blame your kid and you can't treat them like crap if they learn something somewhere else. You know, you can't blame their friends, their teacher, their grandparent, this and that. You know, the only person you could blame is yourself. You gotta look yourself in the mirror sometimes and wonder where your kid picked up that behavior. Chances are it's something that you've done or something you, that you've allowed to do. You know, in this world of coaching, it's you're either coaching it or you're letting it happen. If you have a quarterback that's fumbling the ball all the time and throwing interceptions, you're either coaching him to do that or you're letting him do that. So you have some options. You could coach him up, and if he still does it, you have a choice. You either let him in there and, and continue to destroy the season, or you remove him from the season and you put the backup in, the next best thing, somebody that might protect the football, right? So you're either coaching it or letting it happen. You're either parenting it or you're letting it happen, all right? We just took our daughter to preschool here, and she's already been in preschool, so it was an easy drop-off for us. But there's going to be some parents out there that drop their kids off, and they're going to get tested. Emmy's probably going to test us once again. I talked about this. She's going to say, um, I don't want to go to school. Now, that's, that's the challenge that you're going to have as a parent. We're just going to have to be like, well, you know, I understand, but, you, you know, we're going, we go to school three days a week, and you get to go and see your friends, and you try to spin in whatever way is going to work for you, right? But you want, them to, you want them to do it on their own then. You want them to go on their own. You don't want to do it by giving them this, giving them that, bribing them to do certain things, right? You want to kind of kickstart that in, in, that intrinsic motivation to do things, right? That starts with how you parent your kid. If you give them extrinsic rewards all the time to go and do certain things, then that's what they're going to expect. You give your son a dollar to take out the trash, eventually he's going to want two dollars. That dollar ain't going to be enough anymore, and he's going to refuse to do work, or he's going to want a little bit of an upgrade, right? So you don't want them to do things for money. You don't want them to do things for treats. You don't want them to do things for adventure. You want them to do things because it's the right thing to do. Imagine teaching that type of stuff to a three-year-old. Never easy, but it's still the right thing to do. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there with, with your kids, right? So you're going to have a kid, raise your child, be there for your child. Go to the doctor's appointments, go to the preschool. My dad, man, somehow he worked this swing shift growing up. He still made it to a bunch of sporting events and tried to coach and stuff like that. My mom was always around to take care of us and take care of our friends and do whatever she needed to do to help friends out. But we always had kids around, kids helping. Somehow it worked out, man. My dad will work nights and somehow still be able to get to our games. And that's something that I remember now as a 35-year-old, right? As one of those admirable things where it was easy to say, ah, I'm working nights, I can't make this, can't make that. He would switch shifts. Um, he would do whatever he could to get there, right? That's the important thing, especially when that kid's young, man. Try to be as involved as possible. I've read before, I mean, I tried to read a bunch because I had no clue when we are having a kid. And that was one of the big things that I, I picked up was that be at the appointments, go to everything you can. Be there for your kid. Let them know that it's important to you, right? And, and be involved with that type of stuff. Don't just pass it on to your, your significant other because that's not fair either. So that's one side of it all. And then, you know, serious responsibility having a child. Once you do have that child, you want to be there to raise them. You want to teach them the way. You don't want others to raise your child. Um, and as you get going here, how you respond to situations is going to dictate your kid's behavior, in my opinion, right? There's always going to be exceptions, and there's always going to be um, kids that will do the opposite, right? You know, there's that old story where, say, you have two siblings and their dad's an alcoholic. One kid follows the father's direction and becomes an alcoholic because that's all he saw growing up. The other one, the other kid does the opposite because he doesn't want to end up like his dad, all right? So you're going to see, as a parent, you're going to model certain behavior, and your kid's either going to follow your path or they're going to choose the opposite. My idea would be this. Try to model just great behavior that is going to encourage them to follow your path. All right? It's not going to be smacking your son in the face if they talk back to you and then wondering why your kid has a bad attitude. Um, probably because your response to that situation was terrible. It's not going to be like, um, you know, you can't just do, like, good, wonderful things for everybody, and your kid's going to see that and then, you know, turn out to to think that whatever you're doing is wrong. Like, you have to show them the way. You have to show them what it takes to be a, a like a successful person that um, works with other people, 
right? So you gotta be willing to work with other people. You have to show them that it's okay to like get help in certain situations. That's what's part of being a group, a family, a community is. Um, you have to be open to all of these different things. You have to be open to stuff where you're not trash talking everybody behind their back because your kid's gonna hear that. Your kid hears everything. She'll be in, a, Emmy will be in another room. We're talking about something. She pops out like, huh? What did you say about that? And we're like, oh man, whoops, I guess we gotta be careful. Our friends told us a story today about, uh, you know, one of their siblings is uh, basically just in a new relationship. Somehow the kid just from hearsay just heard all about that stuff, right? Um, and asked a question about it that was totally like out of the blue and they were just like, what? How do you know that? They freaking hear everything. So everything you do matters. Everything you do counts. Life is serious. Life, um, how you live your life is important because that kid's gonna probably model whatever you're doing at some point in their life. They might not do it forever, but at some point they're gonna see what their parents are doing and they're gonna follow that path. Um, where else was I going there? Um, the relationship, right? So I'm a father, right? I I'm, and thought about this. I'm a little bit uh, not always as warm towards people. Not always as, uh, yeah, we'll just say warm, okay? And uh, so we don't, we had this thought, you know, that if I'm not as open to, you know, expressing um, appreciation or gratitude or love to other family members, that Emmy might see that and see that, oh man, dad's a little bit cold and turned off sometimes. Maybe that's the, the normal behavior. That's how we're supposed to act, right? So. For me to uh, kind of see that and understand that I gotta kind of work towards trying to uh, be more appreciative, maybe give some hugs out more, maybe say thank you more, um, maybe show my thanks in different ways, okay? So these are things that I kind of understand and try to try to realize that what I'm doing is gonna mold how she's gonna act here shortly, okay? So at the end of the day here, Chris Fluke on parenting, if we had to sum it all up, having a child is serious, if you're gonna, Find a mate that you care for. Don't just be so loose with your morals and do something that you might later regret, okay? That's number one. Number two, raise your child. Do whatever you can, whatever is in your power to raise a child. You want to have a career, fine. 30 years down the line, you're going to wish that your kid, you're going to wish for that time back that you, you took away from your child because you had somebody else raise them for all of their first moments in life just because you wanted an advancement in your career. Raise your kid, I don't think anybody's gonna say, man, I wish I would've worked more when they're like 65 and ready to retire, right? You know, I just don't think that happens. Having a kid is serious. Raise your own child. The next step, your kids are gonna model your behavior, they're gonna challenge you, they're gonna do whatever you do. You gotta be a role model. You gotta set the example for them. Take things serious, take people's time serious, be respectful to other people, don't trash talk other people. Don't let them get away with things that you find to be um, not uh, not good for the team, so to speak, okay? There's always gonna be rules and there's always gonna be wiggle room with some rules, right? But you need to have some hard line things like, no, we don't hit anybody. Or, no, don't talk to that person again like that ever. There's gonna have to be some hard line things that you're gonna have to deal with. Other than that, there could be a little bit of wiggle room and some flexibility, but identify what's important to you. Um, in terms of like, you know, creating a good character, building good character, being a good person, being a, a vital role in society, and then make sure you follow those always, right? You're either coaching it or you're letting it happen. The way your kid behaves, you're either teaching them some way or another that that, that behavior is acceptable, or you're just letting them get away with it so they think it's okay and they just keep doing it, right? What else is there to say here? Oh, show loved one, show, show your uh, support, show your love, caring, whatever. Whatever my daughter, whatever she sees from me, she's gonna assume that that's normal. If I decide to go play golf and get drunk or sit around and watch football, she's gonna think that that's okay behavior and, and from a mate and then maybe look for that and emulate that as she gets older. So as a dad, as a father, I have a young girl, I have to show her, hopefully I show her, and I, we always have to make improvements in this area, but like try to, try to emulate what she should look for in a mate down the line, right? Try to be a caring person, try to take care of your family, try to be for, be there for them, try to listen, try not to tell people what to do, try to be open, like an open book, and show some love to everybody, and show her how um, like a man should treat a woman, that type of stuff, right? That's what we need to do as parents, all right? Chris Fluke on parenting, take my advice or leave it. Remember, I said in the beginning, I'll say it again, a lot of the things I talked about are things that I'm currently working on. I violate some of these things, right? You know, you always want to talk about being present. Um, 
you know, mentally too, where you're like trying to respond to something in front of your kid, like, hey, uh, whatever, you're setting the schedule for the week and it's typing, it's typing some messages and they're talking to you and you don't always hear them and I'm just like, crap, just put your damn phone down and listen. Or, you know, put your phone in a different room and just walk away from it and just be there because you don't have a lot of time. Like, and remember, nobody ever said 30 years down the road, I wish I would have worked more, I wish I would have spent more time away from my family, I wish I would have, uh, you know, worked 60 hours a week and did this and that, right? Nobody says that stuff. Everybody just wishes that they would have switched it and had more time for their kids, um, spent more time with them, more vacations, more this, more that, okay? Hope you guys like this episode, Chris Fluke on parenting. Uh, later in the week, we're going to be doing Chris Fluke on training the youth. Hope you guys like this stuff. Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, Google, YouTube, wherever it else, man, it's out there, man. Chris Fluke Podcast. Peace, everybody.